Welcome to the Dose of Courage podcast, a podcast where I teach purpose-driven women the principles and habits of courageous living. Keep listening. I promise you will become bolder, more confident, and courageous enough to be who God has called you to be, do what God has called you to do, and take possession of everything God said you could have without apology or hesitation. Be sure to join us in the Dose of Courage community on Facebook to connect and continue the conversation. I'm your host, Courage Molina, faith coach, pastor, and everyone's favorite Bible teacher. Let's go. What's good? I Listen, y'all, I am so excited. I know y'all can see my guest if you're watching on YouTube. Um, go ahead and subscribe. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you know, please get your life, okay? And subscribe. You know what's all the good stuff here? Let me break down this bio for my guest, Megan De La Concha. And because I, I want to make sure that I give you all of the things that are great, I'm just gonna read it the way I have it here. I don't wanna miss anything. I'm also gonna put on my professional voice so that she gets, you know, so I put some respect on her name, okay? Megan De La Concha is a woman's empowerment and confidence coach. She serves women in all communities by empowering their lives with unstoppable confidence, unshakable resilience, and transformation through faith. Megan grew up in a conservative Christian household, but due to childhood trauma induced anxiety. She found herself in a seven year relationship surrounded by drug abuse and domestic violence in her early to late twenties. She was suffering emotional, verbal, mental, and physical abuse. After losing her identity, her voice and self-worth, Megan divinely landed in therapy where she spent two years of hard work rediscovering herself. Tapping into her faith and relationship with God, Megan has since earned three, okay? Three master's degrees in public health, focusing on alternative medicine and mental health. Megan is now a wife and mother of two who was raised who was raised and still resides in sunny Florida. Megan dropped her corporate healthcare job of 14 plus years to step fully into faith as an entrepreneur. Megan is founder and CEO of Megan de la Concha LLC. She's the host of the international podcast. It's quite amazing. I edit that part. Pep Talks with Megan De La Concha and has dedicated her life to guiding women on how to break free of traumatic and toxic cycles and into healing for a fully empowered and unstoppable life. Megan offers private coaching, group coaching, and private mastermind sessions. Whoop, whoop. Y'all, <laughs> help me welcome your new friend and my girl, Megan De La Concha to the Dose of Courage podcast. Welcome. Woo. I will clap myself in. <laughs> I feel like I should have like one of those sound boards. So it's like, I know. I always think that. Like, <laughs> we need to see. We need to see about getting a soundboard. That sounds like something that might be good. Yes. Um, so I met Megan um, in a program. Y'all know my girl Patrice Washington has this amazing program, Purpose to Platform, and I was assigned as Megan's accountability coach. And um, am I gonna say this on the podcast? I think I'm gonna just say it. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I like to rate from the beginning. Like, you know, some people got to warm up to, like, I don't really know how I'm going to feel about them. But when she came, I was like, oh, my gosh, I love her. But I just had to keep a professional and I don't have favorites attitude as a coach. But deep down, I was like, oh, my gosh, I love her. It's just something about your energy. Like, I don't know what it is. But just, maybe it's your face. Maybe it's your name. I don't know. It's a whole package, right? I just love you. So I'm so glad that you said yes to being on the podcast. Oh my God. I'm so happy that I am here. I'm so excited. It's one of those 
podcast and that you're just you get so excited about because I just love everything you're doing and I get so excited about what you're doing that it makes me excited and I'm like oh I get to be a part of this like I get to be on this platform and your podcast I swear I will be chuckling the entire time because who you are if, if anyone has just which I don't know how they could, but if anyone has only just listened to your podcast and hasn't really ventured out onto your Facebook communities or dived into who you are and, and how you interact with people, like you are the same on every single <laughs> platform. You get the same courage Molina and yes. I absolutely love it. So I'm really excited to be here and to be partnering with you on this, what's to be an amazing episode. Yes, it is going to be amazing because we are actually kind of dope. They don't know it, but they will. <laughs> um, and if they know us and they're already like, yes, get to the point. Yes. <laughs> but listen, y'all know what it is here at the Dose of Courage. Like I'm all about like I want you to feel good and I want you to be motivated and inspired. But really, I want you to do something. I feel like <laughs> everybody always says like when they listen to my stuff, they are laughing and crying. Let me just tell <laughs> you. That's my goal, just so we're clear. If I'm speaking, if I'm teaching, I actually, my goal, my hope, if somebody's not crying and nobody laughs, I'm like, I did not do a good job. They're like, why not? I'm like, nobody cried. Not one person. <laughs> like, I didn't do a good job. Or nobody laughed. Everybody was just crying. Like, I know I didn't do a good job. When it comes to the podcast, I measure like how well I did by what you guys do afterwards, right? Like, I want you to do something different. I don't want you to just be like, oh, it felt so good. I want you to be like, bruh, I'm about to do something different. So Megan, let's just right out the gate. What do you hope women will do after listening to this interview? Well, what I hope that they do is you actually just said it right there is I hope that they do something different. And I'm not talking about, you know, this grandiose, huge change that they want it or, you know, like a, a huge move, unless that's a calling on their heart. But I want them every single day to do something different. And to be more specific, I want them to do something that's just for them, something that they recognize that it's a constant in their life, like a constant cycle, because that's something that we cover a lot um, in my coaching is different cycles. And that could be anything from your routine or lack thereof. It could be something as far as your negative thoughts. You wake up in the morning. What is it that are you already dreading the day? Okay. So what can we do different? It's like breaking an addiction, right? You have to change up your routine. You have to change up the trail that the path that you go on. You have to, you know, um, look at different things, smell different things, experience different things. And just something so little as far as I'm going to read a chapter of that dusty old book that's been sitting on my <laughs> my nightstand or on my bookshelf if I even have it. Just something that is going to completely little by little change your mindset, which changes your life, which changes your your courage and your confidence and your resilience. That's something that ha that I've been practicing. So I know like you, I will never tell my clients or my followers or my listeners to do something that is not that something that I'm doing in the present moment right. and my focus every day lately, probably since the beginning of January is just every day. What can I do different today? Just something five minutes, an hour, a whole day if you want it to be, but what is something that I can do different? So that is like my assignment to your listeners that I, I, I bring to my listeners is, and my clients too, is what are you going to do different every single day and be intentional about that. That's so good. But you know, there's so many like super cute things and like these cliche <laughs> things, do something different, do it afraid, right? Like we hear this. Yes. Why is this important? Why is this just, why is this not just a sticker? Cause I'm gonna tell you for the most part, and this is especially for listeners, for the most part, the advice that you get that changes your life, it's very rarely groundbreaking. It's very rarely mm -hmm. something you've never heard before. It's not like, oh, I never heard dude. No, you heard it before. But help us understand, like, why is this more than just a sticker phrase? Why is it important to you? 
for the people that you are speaking to right now, the, the women who are listening. And man, what's up, fellas? Y'all know I love y'all, right? I don't try to play out to the left. Um, <laughs> I just be talking to the ladies. The men be in the DMs like, listen, sis, we listening. Okay, sir, I hear you. So why do you want the people, the individuals listening to the podcast, why do you want them to do something different? Why is that something that's important to you? I, I love, love, love that you said that because I'll be honest, when I'm scrolling through Instagram and Facebook, I'm like, oh, I can't take any more of these. Do it afraid, just like you. And I'm I'm a very sarcastic person, so I read like, oh, do it this, or, or you know, you're strong, or I've we've all read the million and one quotes that are going around. They just have a different Canva background to them. They got a different font. They got a different color. And it's so true because it's like, okay, but what are you really trying to say? What does that really mean? So I love that you asked that question. So for me, when you don't look at your life and turn that compass in, in towards yourself and really look at the patterns and the cycles and the routines that are in your life, it dramatically affects number one, who you are or who you don't realize you are. It affects the type of relationships that you're in, friendships, family relationships, intimate relationships, your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with the higher power, whatever it is that, that you turn to. It affects your career. It affects the choices that you make every single day. If you're a parent, it affects the way you parent. It affects the way you spend money. Because what happens is we get into these, I mean, we've been, we've been living this life for, for me, for 36 years. That's 36 years of built up cycles, patterns and routines, right? And what do we do? We chase stuff that we think is going to fulfill us. We often chase external things. Yeah. We often say to our, we get caught in the, if I only had this, then I would be that. We get caught in, and that's a cycle. We get caught up in that cycle. So it's like, we're constantly on all these little hamster wheels and we become so numb to it. They become so sensitized to it or desensitized to it that we don't understand that because of these cycles, because of these patterns that we've built over time, that we just accept that this is just my life. This is just the way that I am. This is just the way that I think we accept that. And that allows us to settle for this life. And then we wonder, well, how come I'm not getting what I want? How come I'm not happy? How come I'm in this relationship? Maybe I, maybe I ended this relationship. I'm in a new one, but it's the same relationship, mm -hmm. right? I, 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 I left this job and I got this job. It's the same job. It, at the end of the day, it's the same job. So these cycles and these patterns that we're constantly in, that basically creates our entire life around us. So when I say do something different, it's do something to break these cycles, do something to break these patterns. And if that means sitting down with yourself and, and writing out, well, a lot of times what I have my clients do is I have them write out exactly what they want their perfect life to look like, down to what it feels like, what it smells like, what is around them, what are they doing differently? And then what I have them do is I have them compare, it's like writing a job description and it's actually called a job description because you employ people in your life. You are a business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so you're going to offer them something. So what are they going to offer you? And I mean, what is your job? What is your actual job going to offer you? What is your faith offering you? What are you giving back to that? What are you giving back to your friendships, your relationships? There needs to be criteria. You need to have this criteria and be able to do this type of work <laughs> in order right. to have this job. And I have them write down that perfect job description for everything in their life. And then I have them compare it to what is really in their life so they can have a, a double-sided <laughs> view on what it is that they're saying they want constantly over and over and over again versus what they're getting and what they're settling for and have them look inside themselves and say, okay, so what pattern am I in? What am I doing the same? What am I thinking the same every single day that's keeping me stuck? So at the end of the day, it's like, it's really learning how to get over yourself so that you can become your best self. I love that. First of all, let me say this. I kind of like facetiously at the end of the year, every year, especially when I was in college, would be like, hey, girl, um, I just want you to know that I'm going to review your friendship um, record. <laughs> 
And I'm going to let you know. I still say it right now to my best friends, my two best friends. I'm like, if they do something, I'm like, just so you know, this is going in your file. This <laughs> is going to go in your file. And uh, it's going to affect your year in review. Okay? Because everybody just don't get to come back. There's no tenure here. Uh, in the life of courage moment. Everybody don't. And if you don't act right, I will post on Facebook, let folks know. Hey, I'm not taking applications. For oh, I love it. This is what I'm doing, right? So I kind of have that crazy attitude, nice. like, my personality. But it is really true. And I truly mm -hmm. have um, let people go. I do it much more in a much nicer way. Like, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I know. I knew the Lord. Because I used to legit call people up. Uh, my friends start calling them pink slips. They're like, she's she trying to get somebody a pink slips. And I would call them up and be like, hey, Megan. Yeah. Uh, so I know we were hanging out this year, but girl, I just don't think it's going to work for me going forward. I mean, I wish you the best. But just so you know, I'm going to delete your number or whatever. And I don't really answer numbers I don't know. So I just didn't want you to be wondering. Why I stopped I legit, I'm not lying. To, it's not made up. I used to do that. And my friends were oh like, oh, God. that peak slip. And so the Lord has delivered me from a peak slip <laughs> attitude, right? He's delivered me from that peak slip attitude. But I love what you're saying because this is what I realized in, in, my, <laughs> in my before Christ time. This is what I realized. Uh -huh. I do have a certain life that I want to have. I do have a certain relationship. Like there are things that I want to get from a relationship and there are things that I'm willing to do for people I'm in a relationship with. But at the same time, I know we see these things like, oh, don't have expectations. No, I have expectations. I have criteria. Yeah. I have boundaries. I have all of these things. And so you and I both need to see if this is a good fit for you because it's okay if it's not. It doesn't mean I'm a horrible person because I'm yes. not a good person doesn't mean that you're a horrible person because you're not a good fit. But Megan, I read your bio aloud. I hope they were listening. And so I know, I don't know if they remember, but I was thinking, but how did you get here? Because this life that you're describing now and the assignment that you have for the listeners is one that if they did it on a regular basis, might end some of those toxic relationships before they hit the seven year mark, right? Mm -hmm. Might keep them from some of the things, might um, catapult them into walking away from a cushy job and not going to another job just like it, right? If, yes. if they did this thing, then they might have they might avoid some of that. But how did you get here? How did you get to this split space? Like what because you wasn't born here. I mean, I like you. And you were born with a lot of great things, but you were not born into this world with this knowledge and with this insight mm -hmm. um, and this way that you lead your clients. How did you get to know that this is the route to go to a better life, your best life, your best self? Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of trial and error, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to become a coach, because I don't want people to have to go through both ends of the spectrum to figure out, you know, what it is that you really need to succeed and, and how to really accept not your true identity. For me, it's my new identity in Christ and who he's called me to be. So yeah, well, you know, a lot of things will happen when you're in abuse of a relationship for seven years. And, um, you know, again, I don't have to go into it because it's in the bio. It was, psychological and physical um it uh, it drug abuse by by me and my significant other um I was high all the time until I had my son um just to escape the reality that I was in but <clears throat> during that time you know I I lost completely who I was. And I was never an insecure type of person. I mean, we all have our insecurities in high school and stuff like that, but it was never, I mean, I was a pretty confident person. My parents were, they weren't divorced. I didn't have daddy issues. Like, you know, it just, I didn't fit the, the mold of somebody who would find themselves, I guess, in a toxic relationship. And, and that just goes to show that anybody can find themselves into any type of situation. And it's one of those things I didn't figure out until I got out of it or really in the middle of it. Let me so, pause you right there. Don't yeah. interrupt me thought, but I just, I want my parents to hear this, right? Like I need my parents to hear this because some of y'all think that what your kids are going through right now, I feel like I'm a parent of young adults 
And so, baby, it is not the same as when the mother stages. And sometimes you can start to question your parenting, the household mm. that you created, all that. Was this the thing, you know, my horrible parenting that somehow led to my child going down this journey? Did I miss a step? Did I not do anything good? So I need you to hear that if your kids are struggling with something, your young adult kids are struggling with something, this is not the time for you to be blaming yourself. And I did, you know, taking on this label that you failed them as a parent. Megan is here. She's alive. She is telling <laughs> y'all, my mom and my daddy ain't do this. I got this. I got this all by myself, right? I did this. I need y'all to hear that. I also need you to hear, for some of you parents, I need you to open your eyes though. Do not think mm -hmm. that because you have a great home and you're in the burbs and that your kids don't necessarily, aren't necessarily going through something where they need your help and support, right? So I just mm -hmm. wanted to stop you real quick because I know sometimes like we are, we check out, we're like, well, my family's great. So no, that doesn't matter, right? These are individual choices that we get into yeah. Um, whatever for whatever reason and so i just want my parents i really need that to resonate with my parents some of you guys need to let yourself off the hook and some of you need to open your eyes so you can rally around and support your young adult kids who are going through something the life that you provide does not make anybody immune from struggle no one's immune from struggle and toxic relationships. that's not a thing okay so i just wanted to stop you right there so i can speak to my parents real quick all right megan all yes right. i love that we're getting it together though like you're yeah, in this yeah. relationship and I'm in this relationship and now you know the lord yes amen thank god and you know what i grew up i grew up in a in a christian household we went we did all the the, the christian things right we did all the religious things i was in um i was in youth group on wednesday night we went to church on sundays we did everything but i never had my relationship or i should say my knowledge of the Lord was through my parents. I never had my own personal relationship with him. Neither did I have one when I was going through this toxic relationship. So I completely, and you know, and that, and I, again, to your point, um, you can parent as, as amazing as you want to and, and God and, and just bring the glory to God. Right. And, and parent in the way that honors the Lord. But, God already has a plan for your child. Yeah. He already has a plan and you can't do any, you can't, one decision isn't going to change that. So this was God's journey for me. And I was completely broken down in that relationship to the point where I didn't know what, what my own voice sounded like. I didn't know when I looked at myself in the mirror, when I even look back on pictures, I'm like, oh man, that hurts so bad because like, who is this, this sad, sad, lonely, broken shell of a girl? But I tell you what, that that ember, that little ember never, ever went out. And that was the spirit of the Lord. That was that was God's child and me. And that never it might have been dim, 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 but it never went out. And all it took was for God without me knowing. Cause, so this is him working. Even when you don't know he's working, it doesn't feel like he's working. He's it's not like this. Oh, my God, wind in your hair. This is this Holy <laughs> Spirit, right? Like he is he is always working, but he just kept blowing on that little ember just over the years, over the years. And he completely delivered me from that relationship. And again, the parents part of it, my parents, who they were in this foundation that they provided, I was able to stay with them. And that's really when um, me and my son went to live with them. And that's really when my healing began. And I had the urge to go to therapy and I went to therapy. And then I just needed something to do with my time to get my time off of, you know, because it's, it's like an addiction, right? When you get out of a toxic relationship, it's not like you're out and you're good. You got to number one, get out. But then the hardest part is to stay out. And that's when you really have to focus on what got me into this place, not blaming yourself, not judging yourself, but what is it that, why did I stay and really examining these cycles and these patterns and these thoughts? And I, for me, I wasn't good enough. So I stayed. I, all of my value was placed in the hands of somebody else. So I stayed, I was weak. I thought I was weak. So I stayed. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I was isolated from my friends and my family. I felt I had no support. He was the only one. Like it has that control over you. So when you look at these cycles, especially yourself and what you're putting your value in, who you're putting value in, who you're giving that responsibility to, because if it's anybody other than yourself, you're already in a toxic cycle already. And that's what I want people to also understand is 
being in a toxic cycle does not mean, oh, abusive or, you know, just a really bad situation. Yeah. You can be in a toxic cycle when you wake up in the morning in your 8,000, 9,000 square foot house, which is, that's amazing. And you're on your way to your dream job and you're on the whole time you're driving there, you're thinking to yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthless. I'm unlovable. I don't even know why I do this. I don't deserve this promotion. I don't even know how I got here. I'm undeserving. That's a toxic cycle. That is a completely toxic cycle. So how I learned to get here was a lot of therapy to understand my situation. And then also knowing that there was a higher power, knowing that my footprints in the sand story was God removing me from that relationship. It was all him. It, he slung me over his shoulder and said, it's time to go. We got to go. And I, because when I think about it now, I don't even, honestly, I kind of don't even have any really feelings even about that day. Um, it, I just felt like I was really outside of my body and I was just moving. I was just moving, getting my packing a bag. I mean, there was no emotion. I don't, I don't remember it. And I know that, that it was just God just carrying me out of that, of that situation and putting me into new situation. And so I went from not knowing who I was to really trying to find who I was. And let me tell you, I was all over the place. I was all over the board. I, I dealt with, you know, not having a voice to having um, an unregulated voice, I should say, where I was just popping off on every single person and this and that. And, and it was all coming from a place of pain. So it was all coming from healing. But how I really understood how to heal from that and how to get to this place I am now is to, and this is probably the key thing for me, is to completely accept everything that I am in this moment. So wherever you are listening, wherever you are, wherever you are in life, happy, not happy, whatever, I don't care, but accept, fully accept who you are right here, right now, without the judgment, without I shoulda, woulda, coulda, without it, let it go and stop focusing on the past. Stop worrying about the future. Learn to live life within its boundaries because that's what God gives you. He gives you boundaries. It's called 24 hours. It's a boundary. Because God knows you can't, you can't handle 48 hours. It's 24. He knows what he's doing when he's blocking these, this time out. And you're sleeping for hopefully almost half of it, right? <laughs> well, not half of it, but, <laughs> but you know, you're sleeping for because you can't even handle that. But when you really turn that awareness inward towards you and you accept yourself and you say, I love myself for everything that I am, all my flaws, not saying that you're going to settle for your flaws, not saying you're going to settle for your weakness or you're going to operate out of your weakness, but saying, I accept everything I am right now. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have the courage and I'm going to be bold and I am going to work on the things that I want to raise up. I want to work on my strengths and I want to work on my weaknesses. And for me, that was turning to God. And that was really finding my own faith in my own relationship with him and understanding I can just, I can accept fully who I am. And that, that is when my healing, my true healing began. Because when you start to enter that world of no judgment, peace comes in yeah. and joy comes in. And I used to think that I would have peace and joy when I had X amount of dollars in the bank, when I made it into my career highlight, when I was married, when I had this house, all the external things. Yeah. But let me tell you, God strips all of that away. And he just brings you into a place where it's just you and him and you can spin around a million times, but it's like you're in a padded room with him and that's it. <laughs> yes. You said so many great things. Let me, I just want to, let me open this up here a little bit. Let me, let me just open this up a little bit. You talked about being in a toxic relationship because I don't want people to miss this. You know, sometimes if we're listening to something and it doesn't sound like exactly what I'm going through that I might mm -hmm. gloss over it, but let me break this down for the people. Okay. You might have been in a toxic relationship, but that's not the only part. I want y'all to catch this. It's not the only part is that her value was in the relationship. I don't want you to think that because you're in a healthy relationship, because your relationship is healthy and happy, that it's okay for you to attach your value to that relationship. Mm -hmm. Because relationships go through storms, my friends. The word of God says, in this life, we will have trouble. Your marriage, your relationship is not immune yeah. to that. 
you're going to, it's going to be a little problem. But if my identity is attached to these things that I have in life, then if there's a shift, then not only are you dealing with the shift of how you live your life, but you are also now grappling with an identity crisis. I don't know who I am if I'm not a wife. I don't know who I am if I'm not a mom. I don't know who I am if I'm not a doctor, if I'm not a lawyer, if I'm not a this, if I'm not. Now you don't, now you're dealing with the loss or the change or the transition of whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That is already, transition is already difficult enough when you are yes. staying on solid ground. It's difficult enough. But now on top of that, you are dealing with an identity crisis. So I don't want anybody out there to think like, oh, my life is great. That's cool, your life is great. Make sure that who you are is not attached to those external things, even though you have them. You have a great and healthy marriage. You have a wonderful husband, praise God. You have a great, like your kids, they great. Praise God, that's great. Let me tell you something. Do not attach your value to those things because those things change. You don't have control mm -hmm. over those things. Now you're grappling with more than one thing. Second thing I love, Jesus in therapy. People stop acting like this is mutually exclusive. It is not. Just like you're not like, oh, I love Jesus. I'm not going to take a Tylenol. You're taking a Tylenol. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Jesus. I'm not going to take a shower. Y'all put soap and water to your body to fix what? Your hygiene. How many of you are not brushing your teeth because you got Jesus? How many of you are not chewing bubble gum? Oh, I'm not going to chew a mint. I ain't brushing my teeth in 30 days because I got Jesus, but I'm going to pass the mint up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're laughing because you know it's ridiculous, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Think about physical things, but when it comes to our mental health, stability, and wellness, somehow now, you know, practical steps are now, that means that I'm, that Jesus ain't enough. Now all of us, now that I got a therapist, now that mean that the therapist is my Lord. Who said mm -hmm. that? Who is saying that the laundry detergent is your Lord because you're using laundry detergent to clean your cloak with a blood? You're not cleaning the blood over those um, grass stains. You know, you're putting bleach on it or you're shouting it out or something. You're saying, like you're doing the practical thing that you need to do. And so mm -hmm. I need to have that same, that's why I'm so glad you said that. I need y'all to have that same energy around your mind. What, mm -hmm. okay, I have Jesus, yay. Yes, I have the Lord. And I am mentally, emotionally unstable. I'm going to see a therapist. Like, mm -hmm. it's like soap, friend. Y'all use yeah. soap out there? Okay, right, somebody using soap. The Lord's yes. not filling your belly. Y'all are chewing and swallowing something. <laughs> oh, man does not eat, live on bread alone. I'm not going to eat. Y'all are eating and drinking out here in these streets. Go get on somebody's couch. Right? So I love <laughs> I got to break it down. You know, I don't want to leave no. no I love man, it. Yes. You know, I want to break it down for the people. But I absolutely love that you talked about so many practical things that got you here. I also want you guys to hear that she got support. She mm -hmm. didn't just leave and say, oh, I'm going to do this all on her own. And maybe she had parents to go to, but there's somebody that you could reach out to and get support. Sometimes you're not, Some first of all, some of y'all got mamas y'all could call that y'all ain't calling. Let's <laughs> Right, you got a mama you could call, your mama gonna tell you, yeah, you can stop. Some of you have support systems that you refuse to tag in. She's saying she did practical things. She removed herself from the negative situation. She got mental help, like she got help from a professional. She got support from somebody who loved her, could give her the space. And then she walked out the trial and errors. Listen, everybody <laughs> needs grace, okay? Everybody <laughs> needs grace. <laughs> Everybody needs grace. So I came from a place where I didn't have a voice to now I got a megaphone on every topic, everything. I got a megaphone, a pina. Like everybody needs grace and it's okay. This is the beauty of this. This is like, this is the sauce here is accepting where you are does not mean settling. You think that if you accept the number on the scale, that it means you're settling. You think that if you accept mm -hmm. the fact that you're single, that it means you're, well, if I accept this, then it means, no, ain't nobody telling you to pitch tent there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to settle. You mm -hmm. just accept like, okay. It's like the, the map, first of all, I don't even know why I'm using this as an example because I literally suck at using this thing in real life. <laughs> but what's a great example for people who are not me? <laughs> like the map at the mall, right? The map at the mall, they got the map right there. I know they got 
the new fancy ones. Let me just tell you right now, the new fancy ones, the touch screen still does not help your girl. You got to know your strengths and that ain't mine. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I don't understand which way should I go, right? But when you look at that map, you have to, no matter where you want to get, where you are doesn't change where you can get. It doesn't matter where you are right now. That's what she's talking about. She's not saying that, oh, this is not just for people who are in toxic relationships. This is for you. If you are looking at the life you're living right now and you don't feel like McDonald's, I'm loving it. If you don't feel like I'm loving it right now, she is talk we talking to you, okay? We don't yes. talk about that fake you loving it. You don't even have to tell us. You don't, me and Megan, we don't want to know your business. We're gonna mind, we gonna mind a business that pay us. But if when you look at your situation, she told you guys to turn on that internal compass, right? And you look at it and you're like, I'm not loving it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at that space and you're not loving it, you don't have to settle there. But when you are at the mall with the map, you have to accept that you are here. Okay, let me just do a little thing. Yes. Okay. I am here. I don't really know how I got here, but this is where I am. I love it. I love it. Ask like how, what road do I, what steps do I need to take to get from where I am to this other place? And do y'all know what? I'm, I'm not even making this up. I will have to look at two more maps in the mall <laughs> before I get to where I need to go. Cause sometimes I get it wrong and it's okay. Sometimes you're going to get it wrong on this journey. You're going to mm -hmm. overcorrect and be like, Oh, I'm doing the answer. Some of you guys go from like being quiet and modest. Now you got your booty cheeks out, right? Like it is cool, right? <laughs> like you just, you be overcorrect. I get it. Um, but give yourself grace because we all need grace. And for those of you who are watching people um, heal, healing is a process. And you know, we all lose it. You know, every once in a while, we go a little crazy. I've been on the crazy train myself on the road to healing, right? The road to healing is not necessarily a beautiful journey, but it's a beautiful experience, one that is leading you to this best life. So I absolutely loved everything you shared. Like it was so good. Now, you know, listen, I ask everyone this question. Um, so right now, like you got the podcast, you have a coaching company, you are a full-time entrepreneur, you are married, you cute, right? So when people are looking at you and your little social media and your little kids, they cute too, right? They're like, oh my gosh, she's gotten it all together, right? <laughs> she probably never has any moments. First of all, they obviously not on your email list, but we we gonna let them live right now. <laughs> Cause you'll be like, friends, let me tell you about this. What I just had. <laughs> you be like, oh my gosh, girl, I'll be reading those emails. Like, oh, I feel like your real friend reading those emails, but they don't know. They're just looking at you from the outside, and they think that. You've arrived at a place now, you did all the work and you never get afraid. You never have moments of doubt because you're a coach and you're a full-time entrepreneur. When Megan de la Concha has moments of doubt, where does she go to get a dose of courage? Mm. Well, first and foremost, I spend more time than before with God. Mm -hmm. And that that is just sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get a 20 minute hot shower because Lord, I am coming and we about to have a sit down because I'm not happy right now. Yeah. I, I'm not happy. I don't understand or I am scared. And, you know, <clears throat> honestly, and this is not to deter anybody. The moments I think of being scared and being doubtful, um, I think they they come on stronger because the enemy is working against you because now you're doing something. Like before yep. he was just laying down. He didn't care about you. But then he heard you wrestling around. He heard me wrestling around calling God's name. And it might have been real quiet at first. But then he was like his ears perked up like, wait, what? I'm sorry. Who did you call? What are you doing? But God he brings out these weaknesses in me because like the Bible says in the weakest moment is where he's the strongest. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he, and, and it is just all powerful. So I spend more time with him and I know people are like, okay, well maybe what if I, what if I'm on my way to having that relationship with them, but that relationship with him is your own relationship. Yeah. So that might like that may look like maybe I meditate. Um, I use this app called the Abide app, and I absolutely oh, love it. Listen, we need, Abide. We need a sponsorship for Dose of Courage podcast because when I tell you I love the Abide app, it 
can we just talk about the abide it real quick? That's not about yeah. it. Let's just talk about this. Real quick. Let me say. I don't know about you, Megan, but I like, I, I now, like I didn't before, like dealing with my stress and anxiety, meditation is one of the things that I used to overcome mm -hmm. it. And a lot of the meditation is very um, new age, very spiritual, very call on the universe. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool for you, but I'm not calling on the universe because God created the universe. That's me. Don't email me. Yes. You call on who you like. I don't want to hear that during my time of meditation. But then yes. I went to some of these Christian meditations. I love the Lord. I love Christians. But some of these voices, baby, you were not meant mm -hmm. for meditation. My voice, nobody wants to hear me during their meditation time. And I'm cool with that. Like, I'm, you want you want me to be the one cheering you on like, hey, you want, I'm a hype girl. <laughs> if there is a hype girl at, I can do a voiceover for all the long. <laughs> right? Y'all call, call up Courage Molina. She, for a comp, for a, a collaboration endorsement, I will do the hype girl. But some of these Christian meditation apps, I'm like, please, I cannot listen to this voice. No, I know. Abide, it is a godsend. The mm. voice is great. The music is great. Oh, I love it. It is so good. Courage, it is so good that when you, when anybody is my client, they get a year subscription free because that's how much I believe in it. Like it's yours oh. because, because I tell you what, on my journey, on my little journey to finding God, I studied um, Taoism, I studied uh, Buddhism. I, um, when I meditated, I've been meditating, gosh, for over 15 years, meditation and yoga. And it was very much rooted in, um, uh, you know, like Chinese medicine and theory and, and I did, and it would be, I would talk to the universe and, and I still believe in energy, obviously, because God yes. made energy, God made the universe, but now yep. the language is the same, but it's not the universe. It's, it's God now. And I feel the exact same way. So when I, um, you know, I, su I suffer, and suffered from severe depression and anxiety that I was on medication. I've been off medication because of the habits and routines that I put in my life, what? knowing what I need for my mental health. And that's meditation and moving my body. So the Abide app, yeah, 100%. I love it. I think for sure we need to source this podcast to them. They definitely need to give us a, like, I'm surprised they haven't emailed me yet. Like, hey, I, I see you buying all these gift cards. Like, what's <laughs> up? Like, I'm like, <laughs> That's right. I loved, I love, I'm with you though. That app is, I'm literally not even kidding. At the time that this is being recorded, I just sent one to my aunt, like just sent it to her. I'm like, she's like, what, what is, it? I'm like, I'm gonna send it to you. Don't worry. I'm about to send it to you right now because it is so, it is, it is, it's amazing. I'm with you. It is. Yeah. So doing that, spending time with God. And you know what? Also, um, utilizing my prayer partners or just my, my support system. I never had a sisterhood like I've had because I was never able to keep and sustain meaningful, lasting, loving relationships because I was not in that place. All my friendships and relations, all my friendships, I should say, they were all very superficial. They were all very gossipy. I was, I was the first one to hate on anybody I could hate on in order to make me feel good. I was the first one to see who I'm um, calling Mrs. Misery calling you. You want to go get some drinks and you want to talk about so-and-so. I mean, I was that girl. And, and, and now that I have that's behind me and I've been able to transform myself to actually have meaningful, encouraging relationships. I mean, I wouldn't be talking to you today if I were not who I am right now, but so I would call on, you know, there's a sister, the sisters of purpose, the platform, you know, there's a couple that we talk to on a daily basis. I have a prayer partner that I meet up with every month. Never in my life would I have ever thought that I would have these type of people in my life. So it's God. Sometimes it's my husband, but not all the time. Yeah. Not most of the time. <laughs> Listen, I hear that. Listen, I hear you. But you know, but it, but it's also because these women, these people who you surround yourself with are going through the exact same challenges and you know that they're not judging you. You're not judging you. You're not judging them. And it's exactly what you need to get that dose of courage. 
I love it. I love that you have the app. I love that you go to God and I love that you have a support system. I think it was a bonus that you said not your husband. And I'm not knocking anybody who goes to their husband. But this is what I'm saying to you. Sometimes we feel like if I can't go to my husband, there's a problem in my marriage. No, let me help mm -hmm. you. Understand. He's not always supposed to be the support. Like he is not they're not always equipped and it's not that they're missing anything. It's that they were never called to be that. And wow. you that put a strain on your marriage when you, now I'm going to him to do something he was never created or built or meant to do, or even called to do in this season. So wow. I love that you're like, sometimes it's him. I've been married 20 years and I got to tell you, you know, I got a list of things. I'm like, okay, <laughs> these are the husband things, right? <laughs> These are the husband things, and this is the squad. I have to go to the squad for this because they're gonna get it because they're on yeah. that journey. And if they're not on the same journey or in the same space, it just can cause so much friction and frustration or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that absolutely. You now listen up, y'all. Y'all know what this is, Megan. I'm so glad that you were here, um, and we're about to shut it down. But before we do, I know y'all don't think just because I got a guest, y'all don't get homework. You get homework. It hasn't changed. Yeah. Do know, it. This is about the doing. Um, my assignment for you this week is to join the Bible study. Please get a life. Okay. I mean that with love and honor and respect for you. Please get your whole life together and get in this Bible study. It is going to change your life. Even if you can't show up at eight o'clock, I know people are like, oh my gosh, 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning EST. Even if you can't show up at that time, sign up. It's free and you get the replay. So then you can watch it when you get ready. This is a way for you to build your relationship. It is not like a stuffy, what are, it's not, it ain't that. It, the Bible study is me, the same personality. <laughs> The same personality you see right now. It's the same one in Bible study. We just talk in Bible there. Like that's it. I'm still the same. I'm still talking trash. I'm still you know, <laughs> smiling and laughing. Like that's still what it is every single time. Um, but now we're just focused on the word and how we can apply that to our life so that we can grow and build a relationship. And it's certainly a space where you can accept where you are on your journey, even your yeah. faith journey, and just like build from there, like you are here. So that's gonna be my assignment for you. But my guest has an assignment for you too. Megan, what do you want the people to do? Yeah, so we kind of touched base on it um, in the beginning, but I want you to do something different. I want you to take a long, hard look at and you know, I think the easiest thing, um, two easiest things, if you, if people want to do external or internal, so external, take a look at what's the first thing that you do in the morning. And I know, I know we hear it all the time. Don't look at your phone. Don't put your email, but really, but really be honest with yourself. How does popping on Instagram, you can ask yourself this, if, if you're having a hard time, does it add value? When you wake up in the morning and you hit email, you hit Instagram and you hit Facebook, if you're someone who's going through a period, because we all do, where yeah. that social media might be wearing on, on your, you know, your confidence a little bit, your resilience a little bit, yeah. um, because maybe you're not exactly where you want to be. And now you're kind of turning your head left and right. Is that adding value to your life or is getting up? brushing your teeth, drinking a glass of water, sitting on the couch before you even look at your phone, just sit on the couch. Sometimes I just stare out the window. If, if there was a camera in my house, people think I would be, I'm just crazy because I'm just be sitting there staring. I, I don't have a book in my hand. I don't, have, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm literally just staring. <laughs> What is going on? But even just just something like it doesn't like, it doesn't have to be this huge change, but it's like just start with something. So that's an external thing that you can do is when you wake up, what is something that you can do differently? Whatever you're doing right now, just do the opposite. And then if you want to do an internal check, think about what you think about like when you're in the shower what are you thinking about when you're brushing your teeth what are you thinking about when you're doing tasks that don't necessarily take brain power like washing the dishes or doing the laundry and just notice just you don't even have to change it just be aware is it negative is it a positive space and then you can decide if you want to keep yourself in that negative space or if you want to be like dang I really didn't realize I talked to myself like that, or I didn't realize that I'm daydreaming about negative environments or situations all day, like the what if or the worry, like just, just be aware. That's something different you can do every day because then you can have the choice to either stay in that 
or you can change it. It's like little bite-sized pieces that you want to make for yourself that you can digest that actually makes changes in your life. So that's my assignment. And I will say, I'm so excited about your Bible study. I was grabbing my phone while you were saying that because I don't know if you can see it, but I got oh, it in my man. phone already. Yay! I got a 7.30 reminder and an 8 o'clock reminder. Let's go. Let's so, go. I am excited. I, I see, and that just said, I feel like I'm at a place where God and I, we got our own thing going, but I need a little extra something, something. So I'm coming to courage and I'm not, I'm like, I'm not missing one more dang Saturday. It's going to be, so, it's going to be lady city. Just so you know, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> when you guys do something different, do me a favor. Do us a favor, um, share it on your social and tag us. We want to yes. see you want to see what you're doing because maybe we want to do that too. Like, oh, bro, we need to. We have never thought about that, right? Yes. Maybe you're doing something different. Maybe y'all can help Megan do something other than yes. this in our window. <laughs> like Megan, this is what I'm doing first thing in the morning. Maybe you might want to try this, right? So we want to see what you're doing. Take a picture. Let us know. Um, share it on your Instagram and then tag us. I want you to connect with Megan de la Concha. Do I have this right up here? Yeah. You do, you yes, do. Go there. Listen, she's an amazing individual. This is, sometimes you hear podcasts and you're like, oh my gosh, that was so good. Sometimes you realize like, okay, this is what I need. I've been praying about something. I've been looking for something. And I know that this is what I need. If this resonated with you, then maybe you need to get on a call with Megan. Maybe yes. you need to do a one-on-one -on -one session. Maybe you need to join a group coaching program. Everything can't just be like osmosis. I know you heard her <laughs> talk about all of the actual practical things that she did. We met in a program where she invested in herself right? She invested in herself and got coaching that like, sometimes that's what you need. Just because you have a therapist doesn't mean you don't need a coach. That's not, they're also not mutually exclusive, right? They do um, and fulfill different duties in your life. And so if this really resonated with you and you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm so tired. I'm tired of being tired. I accept where I am, mm -hmm. but I need a little help. And I care more about getting to this great place than I do about the fact that I need help to get it. Then listen, holla at my girl. The information is here on the screen if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, that's cool. Don't worry. It is in the description. It is all there, all good in the hood, all the ways that you can reach out to her, connect with her. Don't miss out on this. If this is your next best step, man, let's just make it happen. Megan, thank you so much for coming on. I you so are so welcome. You. Yes, this is awesome. What a great conversation. It was good. All right, I love y'all. I'll see y'all on the inside of the group, probably. If not, it's, it's, just, it's just, I don't know what you're doing if you ain't in there. I'll be there. Yes, later y'all. Thanks for tuning in to the Dose of Courage podcast. I hope that you feel bolder, more confident, and courageous after listening to this episode. If you loved it, say so. And love in the podcast world is a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And it's also by sharing it on social media and tagging us at Dose of Courage and at Courage Molina. I love y'all. And as always, go out and make this day a courageous one.